Now, before we start this video, in order to use all of these features, you will need Photoshop Beta 2024. So you can do this by going to the Creative Cloud, going to All Apps and installing Photoshop Beta. Starting off with the first AI improvement is that we now have built-in Adobe Firefly prompt window. Now, as you may know, in Photoshop, we already have the generative fill, but now if you go to Edit, go down to Generate Image, you will also have the prompt window right here. So for example, if you want to scroll through the library of other generated images and you really like the look of, let's say, any of these images, you can copy the prompt. It will automatically apply it onto here and also the content type as well. You also have your reference image if you want to make it similar to a image that you have, or if you want to change the effects, you can just select them in here. And let's say if you wanted to apply some sort of effect or techniques, you can just apply it in here. Once you're happy with it, of course, you would click on generate. And there we have it. We have a very similar image to what we've just applied onto here. Now, another thing that you can do is you can also completely create a whole new scene from scratch just by getting yourself in the generative image and then typing in whatever words that you wanted to generate. We can go ahead and select the type. We can also either include the reference image or any effects, but I'm just going to leave it as default and click on generate. And there we have it. We have this really beautiful image of a cozy cabin that sits high in the woods, offering stunning views. And this has actually done a really good job. It has so much realism to it. Moving on to the next AI improvement is that you can now use reference images to get yourself a generation or variation that is very close match to what you want it to look like. Let's say that we wanted this man to be in a suit. We can just simply use the quick selection tool you would get yourself a selection of the current clothing that you wanted to change. And then from here, you would go to Generative Fill, go ahead and click on the reference image, choose image, and by selecting yourself an image of a type of clothing or let's say a design, you can just click on Open, go ahead and type in your prompt or you can leave it blank, and then click on Generate. And there we go, as you can see, it's now generated three really good variations that are similar to the image. It's not exactly perfect or exactly the same. However, it's very similar. The third AI improvement is the ability to create variations similar to the original. And you can do this by getting yourself a selection, going to Generative Fill, typing in your prompt, and then go ahead and click on Generate. And then once you've found one that you're really happy with, let's say that you like the look of this one, you can go ahead and click on the three dots and generate similar. This will give you three more variations that are similar to this variation right here. And then once you've found the one that you're happy with, let's say for example, you like the look of this one, you can also use the new feature, which is enhance detail. If you click this one right here, this will automatically enhance the detail and make it look a lot sharper compared to before. So as you can see, if we zoom in, you can see the detail is a lot more clear now. It sharpened it up compared to before. And then this is after. Now, as most of you know, with Generative Fill, you can also use it to change the background completely. Now, before, what you would have to do is you would have to select your subject, invert the selection, and then type in your prompt. However, all you need to do now in Photoshop is go to Remove Background you now have the option to either generate a background or completely import a different background that you have saved on your computer. If you wanted to, let's say, generate a new one, you would click on here, you would then type in your prompt, and this will save you the time from having to invert the selection. It's now generated that new background that we've just told it to generate. It does have a few imperfections here and there. For example, you can see the part of the foot right here is missing. Since this is a non-destructive layer, you can always go back onto your image and by using the subtract or the plus brush right here, you can just bring this back and reapply it onto here. Same goes for import background. If you wanted to, let's say, import a saved background, what you would do is click on here, locate your new background, click on place, and this will automatically place it behind your subject. 
Now, this next improvement is to do with the fonts in Photoshop. So as you may know, if you want to change the font, you can either do it in the contextual taskbar or you can change it in the menu at the top. And in here, you can use your pre-installed fonts. However, Adobe have neatly organized this new filters option on the left side right here. So you can easily find the font that you're looking for. And they've also included this more fonts tab right here. Now, previously, this would open up a whole new tab and you would have to actually go into the web version to have a look at the fonts. But now you can just easily preview them before you even have them installed onto your system. You could just scroll through, have a look at the fonts and use whichever one that you want to use. And then finally, the very last feature that they've added to Photoshop is the new adjustment brush right here. And this one is honestly packed with so many options that you can use. If you have a look at the top, this will give you the option for the brightness and contrast, the levels, curves, and so much more. And the cool thing about this is that you can also use the object selection tool to automatically detect your objects and select it. If you wanted to focus on, let's say this orange right here, we could just simply turn down the brightness and adjust the options right here. You can also just paint it onto any other areas. For example, if you wanted to apply it onto this one, you can increase the brush and then just apply it onto here. And as you can see, it's applying it onto this orange right here. It's a little bit harder to see. So if we got ourselves, let's say the exposure, we can also do it to this one right here and make it a lot brighter. And the great thing about this is that you can also add yourself as many adjustment brushes as you want or need. And this will once again give you the option to also apply onto other oranges as well. 